You wanna hear something shocking? I actually do read the comments in these videos. I actually do read what you guys have to say. I might not answer everything, but I am looking and one of the questions that gets asked so many times, how much should my cat weigh? That's a great question. That's what we're gonna get into today. Now, before I get into the bulk of this video, or the meat of the matter, oh, okay. Anyway, I just wanna put out a few different disclaimers. One thing is no matter what I say, and no matter what, whatever you might read, your cat is an individual, you know your cat, and if you are concerned in any way that your cat is a little heavy or a little light, there could be a lot of reasons for this, and that conversation should happen with your vet. If you're having concerns, go to your vet, that's what they're there for, because here's the thing, that no matter what I say about what a cat should weigh, what your cat should weigh, there there is a genetic component to these things. I mean, when I was growing up, my mom called me big boned or husky. That, that was a great one. Uh, with cats, there could be a lot of reasons why they're big or small. So for instance, my little mutt cat, Valoria, who was with me for 25 years, we struggled that entire 25 years just to keep her weight above six pounds because that's who she was. Now the average weight for a mutt cat, you know, no offense to you mutts out there, is about 10 pounds. But once we get into breeds, I mean, the average weight of an Abyssinian is between eight and 12 pounds. The average weight of a Maine Coon can go 10 to 25 pounds. So you see where I'm getting at here. There's a lot of variables that go into what your cat should weigh. One of the ways that uh, you can just eyeball the situation without getting really deeply into it is uh, their shape, the ideal weight. And, and when you're looking down at them, you should see a bit of a V. So that V from hip to shoulders. Too thin is kind of easy to tell. First of all, you see ribs, you, you know that they're too thin. You see hip bones, you know they're too thin. There's this sort of concave thing that you might see from that above angle. And if you see any of those things, again, go to your vet. Now, we might see those things much more prominently as your cat gets to be senior and super senior. There is a lot of muscle wasting that happens anyway, but it's, it is important to stay on top of it and try to keep their weight up. Now, we get to obese. From the V, we go to a bowling pin. So those are those three shapes that you can look at. A big question that gets asked all the time is, well, what about that swingy little thing that's coming off my cat? I mean, it, doesn't that symbolize that my cat is overweight? No, it doesn't. It's called the primordial pouch. The primordial pouch is, uh, uh, yes, it is fat, uh, to a certain degree that hangs under just about every cat. And yes, on some it swings a lot and some it doesn't. And let me tell you what that is. When we talk about primordial, we're going way back to the raw cat, all the way back. First of all, uh, in, in, in cats that need to defend themselves uh, when, they're, when they're fighting, think about this, the viscera. These are the vital organs here and they're largely unprotected. Think about when your cat grabs a kicker and does the old bunny kick on them. Those back legs, will shred anything that they come in contact with. So take, for instance, the pumpkin head, you know, which I have a soft spot for. I love pumpkin-headed cats, but a lot, most of the time that uh, is seen in unneutered male cats. And it, their head gets bigger, it looks like it, because they have these face shields right here. They're just these tough layers of skin. So if they're in a fight, they're protected here. Same thing with the primordial pouch. Another thing that some experts say is that it was actually sort of a, I don't know, like a spare gas tank kind of thing thing because in the wild cats might not be able to eat every day and this is sort of a place to store food you know that's that's one theory as well now does the primordial pouch signify being overweight one thing you can look for is actually if it's not swinging all that much if it's full which is to say your cat filled it <laughs> with something and that something would be food so don't worry about the primordial pouch Hey, a break in the action just to tell you to subscribe to this channel or ask you, really ask you, please. Because you know, you might even think that you've subscribed before, but about 70% of you who watch this channel are not subscribed. It helps us out a ton. And also don't forget to ring the bell so that you're privy to all the good things that happen here from video premieres every week to uh, lives, community posts, and giveaways. So check it out. 
So now I wanna get into some tips about if you are concerned about your cat's weight. Now my assumption is that most of the people who are asking me this question are worried that their cats are getting overweight. And that's what I'm gonna talk about right now. If your cat is underweight, I talked about how seniors will have that sort of muscle wasting. In that case, again, it's to a degree normal, but when your cat gets into super senior age, especially, you want to be spending time at the vet more often than not. Then the other part of this is if your cat is underweight, and especially if they're above the age of about seven or eight years old, uh, you also want to think about them being hyperthyroid. And hyperthyroidism is, you know, the, some of the symptoms you would look at is if your cat is eating plenty, as a matter of fact, even overeating, and they're still losing weight. They're drinking a lot and they're either really anxious or really active and they're losing weight. Think about hyperthyroidism as being on a constant caffeine IV drip and that's what'll happen to their metabolism too, again, to the vet. Now, let's talk about uh, the rest of this and, and I think this applies to everybody, but like I said, I think uh, a lot of you guys are asking because you're worried that your cats are overweight. So the first really important thing is what goes in them. That's really crucial, you know, because if we're feeding a cat a, a bio-appropriate diet, then the chances of them getting overweight is reduced drastically. So what am I talking about? Now, first of all, I will refer you to this playlist over my head here, which is uh, the three-part series about dry food, wet food, and raw food. Uh, when I talk about bio-appropriate, top of the pyramid there is raw food. The bottom of the barrel would be dry food. Uh, and the reason behind all of this is that cats are carbon tolerant, period. What their body can optimize and use and create less waste and more energy and more muscle and less fat is their natural diet. They are obligate carnivores, which is to say they should be eating like 90% meat. In fact, some of the only carb that would go in them would be the leafy green stuff that uh, their prey would eat. Dry food is just chock full of carbs. I mean, and I'm talking about all of it. I know that a lot of you guys uh, said, well, not my cat because it's grain free or not my cat because prescription diet or whatever it is, look at the label, look at the carbs that it shouldn't have. Carbs make cats fat. I would say, first of all, stick to a grain-free wet or raw, and you're really gonna be helping your cat a lot. The second thing is the concept of free feeding, leaving food out for your cat all the time. Now, there's an, uh, there are arguments about this that say, well, cats are scavengers. Yes, in nature, they are scavengers. When they live with us, we gotta sort of compromise. So I'm a big fan of meal times, and I'm saying you can feed four meals a day, but at least give their metabolism a chance to work. If they're grazing all day long, they're always sort of stuck in that middle place, you know? Plus, it's not optimal in terms of energy flow, you know, for any of us, you know? If I was sitting here snacking on chips all day, mmm, chips. What was I saying? Oh, chips, I mean cats, I mean, Dry food. Oh, free feeding. The idea is just to feed meals throughout the day. You can feed three, you can feed four. It's okay, just space it out a little bit. And there's a lot of behavioral benefits to this as well, but that's my belief on this thing. Now, let's talk about treats. Oh, treats, I know you guys. If you're anything like me, in my heart, it, it, like in my reflexes, if one of my cats is just being cute, I wanna give him food. Food is love, you know? Like, you earned this because you're cute. No, you, you just wanna be cool on the treats. You wanna stick with treats that are, again, bio-appropriate. Um, the, the treats that I work with more often than not would be uh, freeze-dried meat treats and fish treats because they still have that crunch and they're nothing but meat. But then it's about how many treats you give them. Uh, listen, I'm a big fan of using treats to get something from your cat. And instead of just dishing it out, you know, love is food, love is food. No, it's food. And if you're gonna do anything, get something out of it. Which leads me to my next little point here, 
which is exercise. One of the things that treats are really good for is click and treat, positive reinforcement. Let's get them moving around the room. Let's have them do something uh, in order to get that treat. You can train them to go through your version of a cat agility course. Yes, cats do agility courses. Look it up, I'm, I'm not kidding you at all. But these are just ways to use their prime motivation to do something. And in this case, it's just to get heart rate up, get metabolism going, get exercise. Speaking of treats into motivation, what about uh, training your cat to be in a harness so that then you can take them for walks outside? It's amazing to give them all kinds of exercise and enrich their lives indoors. At the same time, if your cat wants to go out, and you can watch this video right here about harness training your cat, it's a real sort of primally satisfying experience. And that kind of exercise, mind and body, is really good. And of course, there is the old mantra. Jackson, what is that mantra? Play with your cat, play with your cat, play with your cat. Every day, every day, get them moving. Get the old boil and simmer happening. Get them to, to go nutty chasing something like this here toy right here. And then when they act tired, let them be tired for three minutes and bring them back up again until they're actually tired. Do that before a meal. Again, it helps to sort of regulate and ritualize their whole digestive system. Playing with your cat, it helps on so many different levels. You know, I, I, I have been talking about it for so long, my face is about to fall off. Once again, I will wrap this the way I started it. If you're ever concerned about the way your cat seems in terms of their weight, straight to the vet with you, okay? Because you do wanna lean on and trust the folks that are in your life for that reason, all right? Uh, keep those questions coming. Like I said, I'm reading them. So give me more because I wanna give you more, okay? And, and oh, hey, don't forget uh, to subscribe to this channel, hit the bell, give us a thumbs up, all those sort of interactive things you can do that make this channel tick and, and really help us out over here a lot because there is a whole team of us, right? Right? Right. right. <laughs> Until next time, my friends, all light, all love, all cat mojo to you. Yeah.